This is Grave Confessions from the Grave Talks. Daily, raw, real, and disturbing accounts of the living, interacting with the dead. To share your grave confession, experience with the paranormal, supernatural, or the undead, call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. Now, today's grave confession. It's going to be a Ouija board story. Well, let me get started. Uh, In the 70s, when The Exorcist came out and... um, Ouija boards were being sold everywhere and it seemed like everybody was getting it and to check something out or um, play games on them or whatever. I always thought it was a game. Well, my mom was one of those people who got it just to see what was going on. I didn't know what she was doing with it. I just know she would tell me not to touch it, not to play with it and just to leave it alone. But, you know, curiosity got the best of me. (laughs) I remember being home alone and um, thinking that this was my chance to check it out. So my mom hid it in the closet. It wasn't that hard (laughs) to get it, you know, get some things, climb up on chairs and everything just to grab it. And I brought it out and I started playing with it by just, you know, just looking at the board and um, yes and no, the numbers and the alphabet and everything. And, well, I used to call it the pointy thing. <laughs> I guess, is it called pancetta? I don't know still what it's called. Um... I put it on the board and put my hands on it and asked for somebody to talk to me or does anybody want to say anything? It wouldn't work. So I kept trying. After a few minutes, I got bored with it. Put everything back in the box and put it up where I found it. Then, oh, I don't know. If it was a month that went by, you know, in those days we really don't know. Um, I was at a, my cousin's friend's house, it's hard to explain, and they were playing with the Ouija board because there was a bunch of us kids there. Um, older kids who were teenagers, preteens at different ages because our, um, mothers and aunts and uncles and their friends had gotten together. They went to go out and they thought, hey, have all the kids in one house where they can have a huge slumber party and they have the teenagers there to watch the younger kids. So, um, after the adults had left, the teenagers and older kids started playing stuff like Bloody Mary in the bathroom, telling us little kids to watch TV or go to sleep to do what, you know, play with our games or toys. And me, I'm always curious what's going on. I'm always following, trying to check things out. And um, they were always stopping whatever they were doing and yelling at me to go back in the other room (laughs) to either watch TV or do whatever. (laughs) And then I heard them talk about the Ouija board and they um, were going to play it. And I was extremely curious because I couldn't understand it. What's up with this Ouija board? Because it was boring. It didn't do anything when I was trying to play with it. And um, I remember sneaking because they left the bedroom door open and I was in the hallway trying to sneak to the door. And... They were starting to talk back and forth to each other. Um, I couldn't make out everything they were saying, but I would hear random um, shouts like, are you moving it? Somebody saying, no, no, this is real. And different things like, we'll ask it a question. And um, just asking it different random things. 
I heard him saying, what is your name? But I can never hear if it was answered. I just would hear them either gasping or accusing somebody else. You moved it. This is fake. And it just, I guess you could say there were some people who were believing it and some people who wasn't and people were swearing that um, they weren't moving it, it's moving on its own and, you know, arguing back and forth. But of course I wanted to see it. I had to see it. So I tried to sneak in the room and then all of a sudden they went, what happened? And they went, what? It stopped. And I was like, I couldn't figure out, man, I can't see what they're doing. I want to know what they're doing. So I had to get closer. Maybe it'll start again, but I got to get there closer. So I was trying to sneak behind me. Uh, of course, my sister shouts, Lisa, what are you doing in here? <laughs> Which made me scream and made everybody scream. <laughs> and she gets up and she marches me out. And she takes me into the TV room where all the kids my age were and says, don't you move. You stay over here and you don't leave. Do not let me catch you there again. And then, of course, I lied and said, okay. <laughs> so, I am um, um, sorry if you're hearing a lot of noise in the background. I have um, the furniture squeaks. <laughs> Um, that's all solid wood, but it's just old. So back to my story, story, sorry. Um, my sister went back in the room. She didn't shut the door all the way. She kind of, um, cracked it. It's because I snuck back in there to see what was going on and noticed it wasn't all the way closed. And again, they started talking among each other. You can hear, you know, different words. Well, I can hear different words like, um, or somebody talking again, like, are you moving it? This is fake. Who's moving it? Um, just ask it a question. Just ask it a name. Just different things different people were saying. And them saying it's moving on its own, it's working, it's working. Somebody saying it's working, it's working. And so I still had to see it and I had to sneak in. It just had to. And I remember just really, really trying to step in without anybody seeing me or hearing me. And, you know, being real quiet. And then all of a sudden, when I get in the room, Somebody shouts, it stopped. What happened? And my cousin caught me. <laughs> and she was like, what are you doing here? And she goes, it's her. Every time you come in, it stops. And she just, my cousin picks me up. She's older than my sister. <laughs> and she plops me on the um, couch with the TV room. She goes, I swear, you move one more time. You know, <laughs> You're going to bed. So when she threatened me with that, I didn't go back. Because, you know, I didn't want to go to sleep and everybody else gets to stay up late. And some time went by after that night and everything. Some time went by. And everybody talked about it did work. You hear them whispering among my cousin and um, their friends, my sister and them. And... I was just so curious again. So I went, I cannot, for the life of me, even if I was with anybody who tried the Ouija board, the Ouija board will not work when I'm present or I can't get it to work. And people who usually can get it to work said it never works when I'm around and for some reason. And I always thought that was odd or it still borders on if it's, to me, really something that really works or not. But I do know that I I always had a feeling it is a door that opens and you got to know what you're doing to be able to communicate with them because you can communicate with anything and you got to be able to close that door. And 
again, I even went to where I would, you know, pray and to open up the door, knowing that this is just for communication. They cannot stay. They got to leave. Everything, and it, and then even close the door, thinking, you know, if I did open it, nothing. It doesn't work for me at all. So, um, that's all I wanted to say, and I always thought it was weird how come. Um, it wouldn't work for me, even if somebody who knows how to work it says it just doesn't work when I'm around and um, they can be working on it when I, but the moment I step in the room, it will stop. Um, it's, it's a very baffling thing. <laughs> Not that I really want to work it, but it, it, it is kind of wondering why doesn't a Ouija board work for me or when I'm around? Just, it's odd. <laughs> I suppose. Okay. And I wish you all a lot of love and sending a lot of prayers to you all. This has been a grave confession. From the Grave Talks. To share your grave confession experience with the paranormal or the undead, call toll free 888 Ghost 13. That's 888 446 7813.